the United States of America has been decisive in helping our Ukrainian friends to defend themselves against a cruel and unnecessary attack by, by Vladimir Putin and, uh, and the Russian forces. And I just want to get over the message here in Washington that there is no conceivable case for delay. And we need to make sure that our Ukrainian friends get what they need to expel the Russians from the entirety of Ukrainian territory as fast as possible so that that can happen this year, 2023, because that's not only the best thing for Ukraine, I think it's the best thing for the world, actually it's the best thing for Russia as well. Let's end this catastrophe as fast as possible. And I just want to say, obviously, finally, that uh, this is the, the right thing for the, for the world, because what the Ukrainians are doing, as I've seen for myself several times, is fighting on behalf of everybody. They're fighting on behalf of freedom around the world. They're fighting for people in, in Georgia, in Moldova, in the Baltic states, in Poland, everywhere, where there is a risk of uh, Russian revanchism or the, or the desire to rebuild the old, uh, the old Soviet empire. And so that's why I'm a passionate supporter of, of your country, uh, Madam Ambassador, and, and why I'm, I'm honored to be here today. Thank you. It's such an honor to, to have uh, Mr. Johnson with us today here in Ukraine House. When we opened the house with President Zelensky in September 2021, we wanted it to be a place where all friends of Ukraine, all Ukrainians, as we say, by blood, by birth or by choice, can come and join forces with us and celebrate our culture, but also help us to fight this very existential war, not only for Ukraine, but for everyone who believes in ideals of freedom, democracy, and the right of people to live like they want to live. So we are honored that one of the passionate supporters and true friends of Ukraine it was with us and visited Ukraine House during his trip to the United States. Thank and you. Thank you, and thank you for a, for a heroic breakfast, by the way. Uh, <laughs> who, 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 should we join? Uh, should I try to answer some questions uh, quickly, if, if, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. Never got a chance to, to tell. Thank you so very much for your support to Ukraine. Uh, all my family, all my friends in Ukraine, uh, a lot of people, they feel you that you are like a superhero from Marvel movie. Uh, they really oh, love you. Yes. Well, I, that, look, I, I think that the reality is that uh, the UK was very proud to uh, have helped at an early stage, and we continue to help. And we see it totally as black and white, good and evil, right and wrong. And, and as far as it's very simple. I mean it. And uh, as to questions, uh, on every kitchen people are discussed uh, the situation with the F-16 right now. Do you believe that Ukraine need them? Do you believe that Ukraine might, go, might get them? I think I would just give a general answer. Every time, that we've been told that we shouldn't give a certain item of equipment because of the risk of escalation, that has proved to be wrong. Uh, so we were told, I remember, that uh, when it came to the, the shoulder-launched uh, anti-tank missiles, the laws, the javelins, we were told there was a risk of provocation and escalation. Actually, it was essential, uh, I think, in the early stages that Ukraine had that type of, uh, of equipment. I mean, the Ukrainians fought heroically uh, but it was also very valuable to them to have that equipment. I remember being told that tanks were, were unthinkable, right? Not, not so long ago. And now we're all uh, giving tanks. So uh, I think my general argument would be uh, let's continue the discussions, but let's not delay. Uh, I think it's vital that Ukraine gets the equipment that Ukraine needs as fast as possible. That is the humane thing uh, for for the Ukrainians and for the whole world. If I follow up on my colleague, uh, yesterday President Biden said no to F-16s to Ukraine. Do you believe it's a hard no or a soft no and can it eventually get to yes? I, I just want to go back to my original point, which is that uh, someone like me who's, who's been uh, around the table from the, from the beginning or, or certainly observed everything from the beginning, I'm lost in admiration for what the United States has done. And the Biden administration has been superb. And they have spent $50 billion, $23 billion on military support alone. And it has been very, very important, in, as I say, in helping the heroic Ukrainians to turn the tide of the, of the war. So I hope that uh, the administration will continue uh, to, to build on their achievements. And I just make a, I'd make a, um, 
a kind of geostrategic point. I think that the investment that the United States has made in this conflict is actually a sensible thing in the long run for the whole of the Euro-Atlantic area. And by constraining Russian aggression and repelling Russian aggression in Ukraine, the overall saving in the long run will be immense. And anyway, those, those are my arguments. But you know, I think it would be really, really wrong to criticize uh, the United States in any way. What they've done has been absolutely incredible. And uh, I have no doubt there will be more to come. How would you assess uh, Ukraine's perspective of NATO membership after the war, immediately, or in short term after the war? Na so the Ukraine's NATO membership, did you say? NATO membership. No easy questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I think that now I've changed my views on this, right? And I've kind of I've migrated from being somebody who basically thought that Ukraine we would have to find a different status for for Ukraine. And I used to think that basically what we needed to do was to find a way of equipping Ukraine with the, 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 the defense equipment, with the intelligence, with the training, so that it could never be attacked again. But, you know, I, I now think that we've had enough of, of fudge. We've had enough of ambiguity about this. You know, we, we tried not having Ukraine in NATO for decades. And what did it produce? It produced the worst war in Europe for 80 years. So I think there's a case now for clarity and simplicity and, and just make it absolutely obvious that Ukraine's security is guaranteed in the way that other NATO countries' security is guaranteed. And that is, I think, a better way to peace. Mr. Johnson, uh, according to what we hear from the Ukrainian officials, Kiev is trying to create it in a special initiative and a special uh, program to locate and seize upon uh, the assets of the Russian oligarchs in the world. Uh, if you were to be offered to uh, take over this initiative and to be like a, um, you know, like just to be uh, ahead of this initiative, mm -hmm. would you accept this offer? In, like, uh, in, what's your assessment of this? I, I think I think you need some. I, look, I mean, I, I think it's a very good idea. Okay. And I think that uh, you, that's, and I think it has made a big impact on uh, on Vladimir Putin's regime. And I think the the fear of having their their possessions expropriated has really uh, frightened his uh, his immediate circle. Uh, and I, I would support it in any, any way that I can. But but Ambassador, you know, you 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 you're on the finance side. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know you know how to do this better than I do. Well, you know, the more sanctions, more isolation. And we're very glad that U.S. not only voted for the budget for this year to support Ukraine, but also on a very special initiative to seize. And when they confiscate the assets, it's already possible to provide it to us. So whatever we can do, it's a question of justice, but also a question of money that could be used to compensate, but to, could be used to, to reconstruct. So all initiative mm. there, whether bilateral with the, with the United States or multilateral, like this uh, different groups that we have, we will only increase them. I take it. Will, will that do, folks? Yeah, we, yeah thank we you very much. Yes, thank sorry. you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.